let's try to analyze the running time in the expected case. So the idea that we have is that we want to bound the expected structural change of the convex hull. So we want to bound the number of facets that are created by the algorithm in every step. The running time then should depend on that. So let's first try to do this. And we want to prove that the expected number of facets that are created in the whole algorithm is at most 6n minus 20. Remember that in the very end we have at most 3n minus 6 edges and that gives us at most 2n minus 4 facets and the convex hull. So in the expected case we create at most about 3 times as much. So how do we analyze that? Remember that the first four vertices that we picked were not random. We chose four specific vertices that are not coplanar. The randomization only kicked in after the fourth vertex. In the very first step we pick four vertices and we create a convex hull of those four vertices. That is just a pyramid with four triangular faces. In the very first step we get four faces. And then afterwards it depends on the choice of the points that we have. So the number of facets in total is 4 for the first step and then for all the other steps r equals 5 to n the number of facets that are incident to this point in the convex hull of the point set, but only of the point set of the first r points. So what we want to bound is exactly this part here. If I take the convex hull of the first r points, what is the expected number of facets that are incident to one of the random points? Doesn't matter which one. And the number of facets we have here is also exactly the number of edges. If you look at one vertex, or one point and you walk around the facets, then between each pair you have an edge. So the number of facets is exactly the same as the number of edges. And for the number of edges we already have some bound. So the number of facets for this vertex PR is exactly the degree of it in the convex hull of PR. So we want to figure out what is the expected degree of this vertex. And to get the expected degree of this vertex, well, there are r minus 4 vertices that we inserted randomly so far. 4 are fixed, the other r minus 4 are random. We don't know which of those is the one that we picked in the previous step. So we can take any of these r minus 4 vertices and we want to figure out what is their expected degree. And for that we can sum up their degree and divide it by the number of vertices we have here to take the average. So we have r minus 4 randomly inserted vertices and the sum of them degree we want to figure out. How can we bound this one? We somehow want to bound it by the sum of the degrees of all vertices. For the first four vertices, however, we know that they must have degree at least 3. If we, when we construct it here, in the beginning, they already have degree 3. And whenever we add something, the degree must stay at least 3. So if we bound this, we can bound it by the sum of the degrees of all vertices. Minus 3 for each of them, so minus 12. And now what do we know about the sum of the degrees of all vertices? We know if we have n points, then the convex hull has at most 3n minus 6 edges. So here we have r points, so we have at most 3r minus 6 edges. And now if we calculate this, this gives us 6r minus 12 minus 12, so 6r minus 24 divided by r minus 4 is at most 6. So the average degree of these r minus 4 vertices is at most 6. Now if we plug this in, we sum up from r equals 5 to n and each of them is 6. We have n minus 4 vertices here, so we have 6 times n minus 4 is 6n minus 24, plus 4 we get 6n minus 20. So the expected number of facets we have in total created is at most 6n minus 20. 
Now we want to use this lemma to analyze the running time again. Um, what is the expected time for this convex hull algorithm? Remember, the worst case was n to the 3 because we have these three nested for each loops. First, let's look at the top part at the very beginning. We pick the non coplanar set, we create a convex hull, compute a random permutation, we initialize the conflict graph. That we can easily do in linear time. So random permutation is clear, initializing conflict graph, the size of it is linear, that should be clear. Convex hull for four points should be clear. Maybe this is not so clear for how to pick the first four points, but actually we can just pick three random ones and then try all the n minus three other ones if they are coplanar with the first three. If none of them is coplanar, then all endpoints are coplanar and it's already over. Then we have a 2D problem and we don't have to continue here. Otherwise, one of them has to be coplanar and then we just pick it so we can do the whole thing in order of n time. Now we have these loops and we want to split it into two parts. The first is this orange part, which is the inside of the for loop without the for each. So how much time do we spend in stage R of this fall? We first have to delete all the conflicted faces from our convex hull, then find the horizon edges, and finally remove the vertex and the conflicted faces from the conflict graph. So the time we have to take here is order of the size of these conflicted faces. And from the graph we can directly read them. And then we can walk through them to find the horizon edges and then we remove them from the graph. So the time we need is the order of the size of the set. And the size of the set is exactly the number of faces that we delete when we add PR. And we cannot estimate yet how many that is. But if we look at all steps in total, we can only delete a facet that we have created. So the number of faces that we delete in total over all rounds is at most the number of facets that we created in all rounds. And for that we have the lemma, so this is at most 6n minus 20 or order of n. So we can only, in the expected case, destroy a linear number of facets that means we have for this orange part in total order of n running time. The second step is we want to look at the for each loop. So we have this purple part here. Here for every edge on the horizon we have to do something. And we have to create a new facet with the current vertex. We have to create the vertex in the graph. And then we have to check if we have visibilities with all those conflicted vertices of the old facets. So if we look at a single stage, then the time we have to spend here depends on the number of edges we have in the horizon. And for each edge on the horizon, we have to do this part. So we also have to look at all the uh, other points that are in conflict with one of its faces. We have to figure out what is the sum of all these conflicts. How much can that be in total? In a single step again, we cannot really figure out how much this is. But if we look at all the steps together, then we can give a bound on it. Because we have to look at the sum of all edges that are at the horizon at some time and the size of their conflict set. And now the question is, when is an edge on the horizon? An edge is on the horizon when one of its incident faces gets deleted. So that means that the number of edges in total that appear on the horizon at some point is at most the number of faces that get deleted. And then each of them can see at most n points, so that means we have at most a linear number of edges on the horizon in total each of them gives us a linear number of conflict points, so this is bounded by order of n squared. Still in the expected case, because we have to use this expected number of faces that get deleted. So this directly gives us that this whole algorithm runs in time order of n squared. 
You can still improve the analysis by using so-called configuration spaces. That uses a lot more math and is quite complicated, so I want to skip that here because I rather want to show you something that I find much more cool than this analysis. But we can improve this to order of n log n time for exactly this algorithm using a bit different, more complicated analysis. So we get this algorithm in order of n log n expected time. In this whole algorithm, this can be generalized to higher dimensions using a similar concept. I mean, it's a bit hard to imagine because most of us cannot think in higher than three dimensions, but you need a few more points in the beginning to get some convex hull, and then you still randomly add points, um, you incrementally add points in random order, and you have some concept of visibility in higher dimension that defines you this conflict graph, and then you can do the same thing for the convex hull in R to the D. And the running time, if we have higher dimension, is actually order of n to the d over 2 floor. And this is worst case optimal because this is also the complexity of the convex hull. So the expected running time is the worst case optimal. You cannot have any algorithm with a better running time than this.